Reality, this is simply just not true at all. But it's quite understandable why the public would hold this belief. And as late as 1988, a highly regarded former FBI profiler, he said there are no such thing as female serial killers. The news and the entertainment media also perpetuate these stereotypes that all serial offenders are male and that women just do not have a violent bone in the body this is this is all wrong by the way this is this is all wrong okay when females are presented in a book or film the most often portrayed as being manipulated by a dominant male and i'm quoting male right this popular but stereotypical media image is consistent with traditional gender myths in society which claim that boys are more aggressive than girls and girls are more passive in fact both genders are equally aggressive okay this is a total all this that it's all men it's just a myth right women can be just as violent as men men can be just as passive as women it's 2020 these facts need to be straightened out Right, so the majority of serial killers are not reclusive social misfits who live alone, who never talk to anybody. They're not reclusive, some might be, but a lot of the time, they're not, all right? This has been fabricated by the media, okay? This is to get people to think, well, if they're a loner then, and they're a killer, then that could mean someone else who's a loner, they could be a killer, okay? Well, a lot of the time, people think, oh, he looks like a serial killer. How do you know what a serial killer looks like? I don't get that. How do you know what one looks like? Right? They can look like me. They can look like you. They look like a normal person. Okay? Many serial killers are able to successfully hide out in plain sight for extended periods of time. Those who do blending successfully, they're typically people who are employed, who have families, homes, outwardly appear to be non-threatening normal members of society because serial killers can appear to be so innocent that they often get overlooked by the law and as well as their own families people it's like i said you do not know what a serial killer looks like and if i had a camera right now you could see my face in the reaction to this because you do not know what yes it's stereotyped what a serial killer can look like just meant to be loners, this, blah, 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 blah. But they're not, okay? I could be one. I'm not saying I am, but I could be one. I look, I look normal-ish. Like, I don't know, Rotten Llama Productions, he could be one. That, that seems more likely, like, but he's not. It'll look like normal people, okay? So, the homicidal maniac called Freddy Krueger in the cult film A Nightmare on Elm Street is another entertainment media stereotype that was rarely found in real life. Sorry, I'm just reading this script now. And it's saying that Freddy Krueger is rarely found in real life. When was Freddy Krueger ever found in real life? Yeah, if there's a murder, I'm going to come into your dreams and take everything. I'm ranting now. Anyway, on with fact number three. Among the most infamous serial killers, Ted Bundy is a rare exception who travelled and killed across different states. Bundy twice escaped from police custody and committed at least 30 homicides in the state of Washington, Utah, Florida, Colorado, Oregon, Idaho, and California. Articulate, educated, he's well-groomed, he was quite charming. Bundy was truly a typical serial killer in his like cross-county killing spree, okay? Unlike Bundy, most serial killers have well-defined geographic areas of operation 
they typically have a comfort zone like they'll stay in their little, little their little area okay Jack the Ripper is actual prime example to this okay because he stayed in the area okay Jack the Ripper stalked and killed exclusively in the small Whitechapel district of London in 1888 okay the comfort zone of a serial killer is often defined as an anchor point such as a place of residence or employment crime statistics reveal that serial killers are most likely to commit their first murder very close to their like due to it being comfortable and more familiar to them. John Wayne Gacy, the killer clown, buried most of his 33 young male victims in the crawl space beneath his house after sexually assaulting and murdering them. See, he did that because he was comfortable with it and he was familiar with it and he didn't know what else to do, more than likely he did. So the crawl space is because he knew where the war and he knew the area and he knew his house, okay? The images presented in the news and the entertainment industry suggest that serial killers either have a depleting mental illness such as psychosis or they are brilliant but demented geniuses like Dr. Hannibal Lecter. Neither of these two stereotypes are quite accurate. Instead, serial killers are more likely to exhibit antisocial personality disorders such as sociopathy or psychopathy which are not considered to be mental illnesses by the American Psychiatrist Association, the APA. An examination of a psychopathy or sociopathy and a discussion of the powerful connection between antisocial personality disorders and serial homicide is presented in books. In fact, very few serial killers suffer from mental illnesses to such a depleting extent that they are considered to be insane by the criminal justice system. To be classified as legally insane, an individual must be unable to comprehend that an action is against the law at the exact moment the action is undertaken. In other words, a serial killer must be unaware that the murder is legally wrong while committing the act of murder to be legally insane. This legal categorization of insanity is so stringent and narrow that very few serial killers are actually included in it. Mm.